for the pledge. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Shank, would you uh, please uh, lead us in a optional prayer today? It's not a prayer. Um, as you mostly know, I, I do love our presidents and their great wisdom and words uh, that they were thinking about and speaking before most of us were even born. With everything going on in our country and our world, you know, I wanted something non-committal. I didn't want to say left or right, red or blue. So I, I researched around and um, I'm going to use some words from John F. Kennedy. I mean, he was a great guy, a veteran. I think he, if he would have been around a little bit longer, he would have done some even greater things. His quote is, one person can make a difference and everyone should try. Thank you. Thank you for those words today. Uh, Mr. Smith, where, may we have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Clear? Yeah. Mr. Horton? Mr. Rastetter? Here. Mrs. Rennie? Here. Mrs. Showerman? Here. Mr. Shank? Here. Chairman Anderson? Here. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is approval of the previous minutes from past meetings, and we can do uh, all three as one or separately, depending on what uh, Council's uh, preferences, uh, but may I have a motion? So moved. Yeah. Uh, for all, all three meetings to approve the minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, motion uh, moved by uh, Chairwoman Clear and seconded by Chairman Horton. Any questions or comments? Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the approval of minutes, uh, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. Mr. Sparber, uh, we had asked whether the uh, county executive uh, had had any reports today. Uh, so uh, I know that you said no, but if we could please just uh, have you, uh, for the record, reiterate that. Uh, thank you. No, uh, no reports tonight, sir. Thank you. Uh, next is a report from our uh, finance committee uh, chairwoman, Kim Clear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Finance Committee met on Thursday, January 14th, 2021, and I su am submitting um, old business items A and B and new business items A through E, H through K. Thank you very much. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And uh, next is a report of the Personnel Committee, Chairwoman Mary Rennie. Mary, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Personnel Committee also met on Thursday, January 14th. I am submitting items F and G under new business for today. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman Rennie. Uh, next on our agenda, uh, we have uh, a number of uh, citations today and uh, four uh, uh, honoring uh, members of our community. I would like to recognize Councilman Shank, uh, who will take the lead in that for us today. Councilman Thank you. Shank. Thank you, Chairman Anderson. We have quite a list today. Uh, unfortunately, this is part of our job that it, 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 it's kind of a sad time, but it's also a, a time for reflection. So uh, Chairman Anderson has a list of, of recipients, John C Canavan and Carlin, Jerome Devlin, Jane Herzig, Shirley Parker, Gordon Reynolds, and Yvonne Strasser. I hope I pronounced those names right. Now, my presentation is to John Vendetti, 
I, I did invite several of the family members to join us today uh, just to kind of see what we do. And this is how we say thank you to the folks that we unfortunately lose. John was a unique and very charismatic type of guy. Everybody knew him. He served his community well. I think he enjoyed his life. I know he enjoyed what he did. And uh, there's not too many people in, in this town or even the tri-state area that doesn't know John Vendetti. Um, quick kind of story, I was on the campaign trail. I wasn't really paying attention to my list of where I was at. I knocked on a little white house and I hear this gruff voice yell, who's at my door? I'm like, well, sir, this is Brian Shank and I'm running for county council. And I really wasn't sure who I was talking to until his lovely wife yelled out, Brian, it's okay. We got you covered. If you need a sign in the front yard, you knock yourself out. So then I realized I was at John Vendetti's house. Uh, that should be a good lesson when you're out knocking on doors. Make sure you know whose door you're knocking on. But uh, John and I had talked many times. Great guy. Uh, so unfortunately, when, when it's time to go upstairs, we will all miss him. I will miss talking with him at, at events we've uh, been at here locally in Harbor Creek. Mrs. Vendetti, the Vendetti family, and everybody from all of us on County Council, we are very sorry for your loss. We are here for you. You know where I live, so you know where to find me. Um, and Mr. Smith, would you please read the citation, please? Mr. John A. Vendetti, 1940 to 2020. Where is John A. Vendetti passed from this world? On December 14, 2020, at the age of 72 years, John was born on July 7, 1948, to the late <clears throat> Alex and Angeline de Placido Vendetti in Erie. Whereas embodying ide the ideals upon which America was founded, John served in the United States Army during the Vietnam War. Whereas John served as a magisterial district judge in Erie's third ward from 1976 until his retirement in 2006. After his retirement, he worked at Downing Golf Course and whereas John was a talented golfer and guitar player, a Beatles fan, and an avid volunteer and pet rescuer, he enjoyed daily walks with his dog, Riley, and spending time with them, laughing with family and friends. And whereas in addition to his parents, John was preceded in death by his two sisters, Carol was Nikki, and Marilyn Cospiel. John is survived by his loving wife, Lori Vendetti, one stepdaughter, Amber, Amber Oaks, married to Vinny, brother Frank Vendetti, married to Debbie, one sister, Lucille Vendetti, and three grandchildren, Kyla, Shana, and Camille. He is also survived by many nieces and nephews. Now, therefore, we, the undersigned members of Erie County Council, join in celebrating the life of John A. Vendetti, a man dedicated to his community, our country, and a guiding light to his family and friends. May he rest in peace. In witness whereof, we had set our hands and the seal of Erie County the sixth day of 19th day of January, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Councilman Shank, for that. And are there any other members of council that would uh, like to make any comments at this time? I, I would just like to make uh, one, one comment. Uh, the greatest of respect for uh, Judge Vendetti and uh, my uh, good friend, Tom Carney, TC, 
uh, third and fourth ward judge now, he would uh, be very upset with me if I didn't say uh, uh, to John, love you, brother, from TC. So uh, with that said, uh, thank you to all the members of the Vendetti family for sharing John with the community and for being with us today. Thank you so much. Uh, next on our uh, agenda is uh, old business um, item A. Uh, Mr. Smith, should we have a, uh, a reading of that first or pull it off the table before we do a reading of the original? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would say uh, we want to pull that off the table first. Okay. Uh, so to have these items uh, activate on our agenda, I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, remove them from the table. Mr. Chairman, um, I move to remove item A from the table. Thank you. That's ordinance number 109 of 2020. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments? Can I say something before? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I, no, that's okay. I apologize. I, I just want to say I appreciate you guys doing this for my uncle. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. You're more than welcome. And I, I apologize. I should have given you honored him in a very proud way. And we all won't forget it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and actually, uh, with, with that said, let me uh, step back uh, because I had missed the uh, hearing of the public uh, and I apologize for that as well. There was nobody that has been signed up uh, to, to be allotted the five minutes. So uh, let me offer that now. Are there any members of the public that wish to be heard? Any members of the public that wish to be heard? And finally, any members of the public that wish to be heard? Okay, th thank you for that. And I apologize for the oversight. Um, but uh, if we could have, uh, one, once again, uh, Kim, if you could just make that motion uh, again to remove uh, item uh, ordinance number 109 off, off of the table. Mr. Chairman, I move to uh, move second reading of ordinance number 109 off the table. Second. Thank you. Uh, the uh, motion to remove from the table, uh, item number 109 has been motioned by Councilwoman Clear and seconded by Councilman Shank. Any uh, questions or concerns? Okay, uh, Mr. Smith, can we have a roll call vote, please? The motion to remove, Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, Councilwoman Rennie. I'm sorry, Councilwoman Clear. Um, I move to uh, change uh, the uh, language in item A um, to reflect ordinance 109-2021. Um, well, be well, before we do that, I think what uh, Mr. Smith was suggesting, we keep it 2020, but the, the title where it says 34th 2020 general fund that we change it to uh, first 2021 general fund. I apologize. No, that's okay. Okay, so I move to, it's going to be the first, blah, 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 the first, is that correct, of the yes. 2021 general fund. Okay. Yes. I apologize. That's my move. <laughs> okay, and then I think there was some language about the aligning that with the competing or with the, uh, the resolution that um, yes, this will be complemented by the new business item C resolution uh, in support of Erie Forward of the Community Investment Initiative from the Regional Cham Chamber and Growth Partnership. Okay, so we have the, uh, that language for uh, amendment by uh, Councilwoman Clear and seconded by Councilman Horton, I believe. Um, any questions or comments from members of council? 
Mr. Smith, can we have a roll call vote on the uh, amendments? Yes, Mr. Rastetter. Yes. Mrs. Rennie. Yes. Mrs. Showerman. Yes. Mr. Shank. Yes. Mrs. Clear. Yes. Mr. Horton. Yes. Chairman Anderson. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is uh, the, the uh -huh. uh, possible removing of the table of uh, ordinance number 110 of 2020. Yes, okay. Councilwoman Clear. I'm so sorry, Mr. Chairman. I think we need to actually do the second reading now of the ordinance. Um, oh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, a second reading as amended. Uh, Mr. Smith, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a second reading of Ordinance 109 2020, first 2020 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $150,000, and new line for grant funds to the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership. So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by uh, Councilman Horton, seconded by Councilwoman Clear. Are there any other questions or comments uh, of this as amended? Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On ordinance 109, Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Now, now we will re move on to a, the potential removing of the table of ordinance number 110. Mr. Chairman, I move that we, rem uh, that we remove the um, uh, ordinance 110 from the table. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A second. Thank you. We have a motion to remove from the table ordinance number 110 by uh, Councilwoman Clear and seconded by Councilman Horton. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Councilwoman uh, Clear, yes. Thank you very much. I move to um, change uh, the language in this uh, from the 35th supplemental um, to the second 21. 21 fund budget appropriation. Um, and I also um, am going to make a motion to change the wording anywhere where it uses the word minority to change it to the word diversity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We have a motion to amend. Second. Okay, we have a motion to amend by Councilwoman Clear, seconded by Councilman Horton. Are there any questions or comments on the amendments? I have a comment, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Rastetter. I uh, uh, want to thank you, Carl, for uh, to uh, for looking into uh, this wording of minority based. You know, it it really bothered me. It's kind of a uh, <laughs> condescending type of phrasing there. And uh, I think diversity works a lot better. Although I uh, still hate to see it be exclusionary. And I don't know enough about the, the whole plan for this grant program. Uh, otherwise I would be voting no, but I'm willing to give it a shot. I thank you.
taking notice of my worries there. And uh, I wish Mrs. Benjean the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rastetter. Uh, any other questions or comments from members of council? Mr. Smith? Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Councilwoman Clear. I was just going to um, say that I, I am excited that we have um, something uh, that is going to be in place that will be inclusive of all people that have um, may have not had a voice for 400 uh, years here in the United States it, or in this, in this area. So I'm hoping that it will make our area more inclusive. I hope that that's the goal here. Okay, thank you. Uh, you uh, Councilman Horton. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're on mute. I, I can hear you, but they can't. I want, to yeah. thank, thank you. I want to thank the administration and the redevelopment, county redevelopment authority for putting this forward. Uh, it really is in line uh, with an ordinance that we all voted seven and oh last year to support. And I believe it was supported by a resolution as well. Uh, they did have, a, they do have a full I understand Mr. Rastad's uh, concerns. Uh, I must, I would be remiss if I didn't point out uh, that the reason that there's a need for this type of activity or fund uh, is because, and this isn't just the country, but right here in Erie, Pennsylvania, in Erie County, over 100 years of red light. Thank you, Councilman Horton. Uh, Mr. Smith, can we have a roll call of a vote on the amendment, please? On the amendment, Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Uh, now, could we have a reading of uh, second reading of ordinance number 109 as amended? I'm sorry, 110. Excuse me, 110. Second reading of 
Ordinance 110 2020, second 2021 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $250,000, and new line for grant funds to the Erie County Redevelopment Authority. Second. Uh, we have uh, the motion moved by uh, Councilman Horton, seconded by Councilwoman Clear. Any comments or questions from members of council? Uh, if not, uh, Mr. Smith, can we have a roll call vote on the ordinance as amended? Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Thank you. I would uh, just like to make a couple uh, comments uh, now that we've passed this ordinance. Uh, and, and I too uh, uh, wish uh, Tina Mangine the best at the Redevelopment Authority. Uh, council is uh, giving this money uh, as we've just voted to do uh, as seed money uh, in the plan that she has brought forward. Uh, and we uh, are hoping for uh, big things from her uh, and uh, looking forward to big things from her in regards to using this seed money as matching money uh, with other uh, organizations and other grant opportunities uh, to really uh, leverage uh, what we have done here today as council uh, to be able to have this grow and really make an impact and benefit to the community. So uh, I thank my colleagues for uh, their support on this uh, and, and remind uh, all of us uh, and, uh, and the Redevelopment Authority uh, that this is uh, seed money uh, to be leveraged and, and to build and to grow uh, into something uh, that we can all be uh, more proud of than we are today. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, let's move on to new business. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Councilwoman Clear. Um, I would like to amend the agenda, please. Um, I would like to amend uh, uh, items A and B and move those to a second reading. Um, and um, I would like to also group together um, H through K as one motion. And I would also like to add an item to the agenda. Um, it would end up being uh, um, I, it's resolution number four, 2020-21, uh, promoting and preserving unity, mindfulness, hope, opportunity, equity, justice, and civility on the eve of the 45th presidential inauguration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we, we have a motion by uh, Councilwoman Clear to amend the agenda and seconded by Councilman Horton. Any questions or comments from members of council? Uh, seeing none, may we have a roll call vote, Mr. Smith? Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank. Mrs. Mr. Clear. Shank, you're muted, Mr. Shank. Yes, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if Mr. Shank was going. Right. Sorry about that. Yes, I do apologize. And Chair, Chairman Anderson. Yes, and you, you caught Mr. Shank's vote? I did. Okay, thank you. Uh, then with our amended, our agenda amended, uh, Mr. Smith, could we have a second reading of ordinance number one of 2021? Second reading of ordinance number one, 2021, third 2021 general fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $54,140 for courts computer software upgrade. So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a, a motion by uh, Councilwoman Showerman, seconded by Councilman Shank. Any questions or comments from members of council? Uh, thank you. Uh, 
Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the motion to approve uh, ordinance number one, Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Actually, be, before we move on, and I apologize to the members of, of council uh, for this, but um, apparently earlier in the meeting when the we asked for citizens to be heard, uh, there was somebody who raised their hand and I, I was not able to see that on my computer, but she actually just uh, texted me in the chat and uh, her name is Jen. Um, so I would like to pause the meeting right now uh, and give her an opportunity if she is still on uh, because we serve anytime uh, citizens to be heard is here. We all always want to uh, give them the opportunity to speak. Uh, and I apologize that I did not see that earlier. Uh, but if Jen is still on, uh, we would Hi. certainly like to have her speak now. Jen, please go ahead. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Um, I live on West 8th Street and I know that um, they're planning on doing some work out here. And I spoke at city council several times um, and I've called many people. Um, I just want to know if the plan that I see is the actual final plan. Um, and it's because uh, the main issues on West A Street, if anybody would just drive out here, <clears throat> you will see that when our, where our sidewalk is, it goes directly to the same exact level of the street. And that's it. There's no grass. There's no planter zones. There's no buffer in between the sidewalk in front of my house and West 8th Street. And that might not seem like a big deal, but when they plow snow and I shovel my sidewalk, which I do all the time, um, as soon as I shovel it, the snow goes directly back into the sidewalk, not on the planter zone, not on the grass like most people have, like the people across the street have. Um, and in addition to that, in the middle of our sidewalks, all the way down the block, there's telephone poles. And so these are two things that I, I spoke at city council about. I brought you guys pictures years ago. I've been complaining to poor um, Mass Sala for years. I call the city all the time. And when I saw what looks like to be the plan, it looks like they did out like nothing that is, is, has been my concern for the last 13 years here. And so I'm just hoping that is not the final plan. Um, Jen, let, let me just ask, I, I assume that you're in the city of Erie if you've been to the, the council meetings or are you in the city or Milford? Yeah, I live, right, yeah, it's, it's the 1800 block of West A Street and what, what's happened out here is that there's no stoplights or red lights or stop signs between Lincoln and Pittsburgh Avenue. So people gun it from Pittsburgh or from Lincoln, bam, fly past my house, my dog got killed, my kid's truck got totaled. Um, you cannot cross the street out here. I mean, ask the mailman, ask any person that tries to walk out here. And so when they plow the snow and it ends up, it's enough that people speed out here. But when they put the snow on your sidewalk, you're forced to walk in the street. If you would go past the Little Caesars, uh, Greg Rabino's got a property out here. They have snow today that is as tall as the, your doorway in your house. I mean, it's eight, 10 feet tall and it's completely blocking the sidewalk. If you guys would put if we could add grass out there, you know, planter zones, then at least people would have, a, the snow would have a place to go. As far as the businesses, they could plow their snow a little farther back. Um, so that, that, those are the main reasons for my, my call. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I don't know if we can give you any answers about that today and that it really falls under the jurisdiction of the city, uh, but right. I can uh, suggest to you that um, uh, between, uh, Councilman Horton, uh, Councilwoman Rennie, and myself, uh, who represent mm -hmm. the city, and this is cer certainly a part of Councilman Horton's area, um, that we right. can make some inquiries into the city uh, and get back to you. Uh, and um, if you, you don't need to do this online, but if you would like to 
uh, email uh, Nicole Innan your contact information. Uh, and we uh, can certainly, uh, and I, I think my colleagues uh, along with myself are will more than willing uh, to do that for you to check in with the city and see uh, if that is their final plan or uh, whether they are going to make amendments to it. Okay, that's great. I really appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. And uh, again, I apologize that, that I missed you uh, early on. So It's okay. I don't think I knew what I was doing. <laughs> so thank you again. Well, that, that's two of us then, so. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, can we uh, go back to uh, the new business uh, for a second reading of ordinance number two, 2021, Mr. Smith, please. Yes. Second reading of ordinance number two, 2021, first 2021, mental health, intellectual disabilities, MHID fund budget, supplemental appropriation of $295,914 in additional revenue for homeless assistance. So moved. Uh, it, oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, it, it was moved by a councilwoman uh, clear and seconded by Councilwoman Showerman. Are there any questions or comments from members of council? Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On ordinance number two, Mrs. Rennie. Yes. Mrs. Showerman. Yes. Mr. Shank. Yes. Mrs. Clear. Yes. Mr. Horton. Not sure if I heard Mr. Horton. Yes. Did, Thank did you, sir. Hear? Yep. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Thank you. It, it, it's hard for me because when uh, on, Andre and I end up on mute. We're sitting here with each other so we could hear each other, but, <laughs> but then we, we don't know whether you guys can hear us or not. So uh, anyway, so um, uh, next on our agenda is uh, resolution number one of 2020. Could we have the reading of that in title only, Mr. Smith? Resolution number one, 2021, in support of Erie Forward, the Community Investment Initiative from the Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership. So moved. Second. We have the motion uh, by Councilman Horton and seconded by Councilwoman Clear. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Councilwoman Clear. Um, I wanted to move to um, add some language in there uh, that this is a complement of old business item A, Ordinance 109 2021. 20, um, 2020 funny, uh, general fund uh, budget supplemental approach the appropriation of 150,000 a new line for grant funds for the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay, M Mr. Horton, would you mind backing up your motion? So, uh, Councilwoman no, Clear. No. Okay. So, All right. Thank you. So, could could we ask you, uh, Councilwoman Clear, you're asking to amend the resolution. We should have done that before we motioned it. Uh, I apologize. That's no, that's okay. Uh, please go ahead. All right. Yeah. So I, I would like to uh, amend the language and add that this is a complement of old business item A, ordinance 109-2020. Um, it's a 2020 20 general fund budget supplemental appropriation of 150000 and new line for grant funds to the Erie Ch Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership. Okay, we have a motion to, to amend this resolution. Second. Uh, and uh, the motion was made by Councilwoman Clear and seconded by Councilman Horton. Any uh, questions or comments of members of council on the amendment? Mr. Smith, can we have a roll call vote as amended? 
on the uh, or, I'm amendments. Sorry, on the amendment. Yes, sir. On the amendments to resolution one, Mrs. Showerman. Yes. Mr. Shank. Yes. Mrs. Clear. Yes. Mr. Horton. Yes. Mr. Rastetter. Yes. Mrs. Rennie. Mrs. Rennie. Um, that was a yes. I'm sorry. Uh, I wasn't muted. Yeah, no, we didn't. Um, we, we didn't hear you. But thank you. And and lastly, Chairman Anderson. Yes. Uh, thank you. So uh, can we have a vote uh, as amended motion by uh, Councilman Horton, seconded by Councilwoman Clear. And if there are no further questions or comments, Mr. Smith, can we have a vote as amended? Yes, Mr. Shank. Yes. Mrs. Clear. Yes. Mr. Horton. Yes. Mr. Rastatter. Yes. Mrs. Rennie. Yes. Mrs. Showerman. Yes. Chairman Anderson. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda. End them on our agenda is resolution number two. Uh, could we have the, the reading of that in title only, Mr. Smith? Resolution number two, 2021, approving the 2021 solicitor contract for the office of the Erie County Controller. So moved. I'll second it. We have a motion by Councilwoman Clear and seconded by Councilwoman Showerman. Are there any questions or comments from members of council? No. Um, Councilman Horton. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, we're going to uh, you know, vote on this resolution uh, for solicitor's contract. And I know last year uh, when I was the chair, we had an opportunity to do some things for our solicitor uh, who said that he would be patient uh, and was willing to wait. But our solicitor has been here 30 some odd years. So this year it took on a whole level more of responsibility. Uh, everything from litigation through the college, uh, through the elections. And so I would hope it is my intent uh, to uh, come back and ask that we write that wrong at our next meeting. Um, discussion with the rest of my colleagues in that day. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilman Horton. And any other uh, questions or comments? Mr. Smith, can we have a roll call vote, please? On resolution number two, 2021, Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Next on our agenda, uh, item on our agenda is resolution number three. Uh, could we have the reading of that in title only, please, Mr. Smith? Resolution number three, 2021, exonerating 20, 2018 taxes for the New Life Spirit and Revival Center, 315 East 9th Street, Erie, Pennsylvania, parcel. 15-020-016.0-114.00. So moved. Second. It was uh, moved by Councilman Horton, 
second by Councilwoman Clear. Are there any questions or comments from members of council? Seeing none, uh, may we have a roll call vote, Mr. Smith? Yes, on resolution three, Mr. Horton. Yes. Mr. Restetter. Yes. Mrs. Rennie. Yes. Mrs. Showerman. Yes. Mr. Shank. Yes. Mrs. Clear. Yes. Chairman Anderson. Yes. Next item on our agenda is a possible appointment of Brad Paganoff to a five-year term to the Erie County Airport Authority. Uh, this is an appointment of District 5, uh, Mr. Shank. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate that. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shank. Before that, could we have a motion? So move. So move. Second. Uh, were, were you making a motion, Mr. Shank? Yeah, I made the motion. Thank so, you. I'll, everybody was excited to make motions. So yeah, that, no, that's okay. <laughs> so I'll I'll recognize you as uh, you. making that motion for uh, Councilman Shank and seconded by Councilwoman Clear. And Mr. Shank, would you uh, like to be recognized for comments? Yes, I would, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Brad has a, a very colorful resume. I know you all have a copy of it, and uh, hopefully you read it. He is a, a real go-getter. He is a guy that. Uh, wants to be involved in his community. He wants to give back. He, he's like, he, he explained to me, he's had a privileged life and wants to give something back. He's expressed his uh, um, wanting to work with the airport authority. Um, he's not a pilot or, or an astronaut, but he's a guy that loves aviation. And, uh, and so when he asked me to, to consider it, we had uh, several conversations online and in person. And I, I believe uh, he's the right guy for the right job. He's motivated. He's ready to go to work. I yield back. Thank you, Councilman Shank. Any other questions or comments from members of council? Seeing none, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the appointment of Mr. Paganoff. Mr. Rastetter. Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Ne next on our uh, agenda is a possible appointment of Catherine DeViterio. Hopefully I'm saying that right, Mr. Rastetter to a four-year term to the Erie County Human Relations Commission. Uh, and that is Mr. Rastatter's appointment in District 6. Do I have a motion? So moved. The motion was made by Councilman Rastatter, seconded by Councilwoman Showerman. And Mr. Rastatter, would you like to be recognized for a few comments, please? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Catherine is a very impressive young lady, I'll tell you. It was not an uh, easy decision. I had a few good uh, candidates, but uh, Catherine has been working as a volunteer with Impact Corey doing office work. She's very uh, adept at all the new uh, office type equipment and programs that are going on now. Uh, she has worked for Citizens Bank as a licensed banker and investment banker. Also, the Erie Federal Credit Union, loan officer, member service officer. She is currently a uh, law student at Duquesne University. She's in her third year. And she uh, is looking forward to graduation, of course, and she is just thrilled to have this chance to uh, work on the human uh, relations. So uh, she really was the best candidate for the job and I'm looking forward to working with her. And she does have some unique skills uh, as far as the banking, I think uh, should go along well with uh, what they do down there. 
And I yield back. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rastetter. Uh, we have a, a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the appointment, Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. I believe that was Shank, and that's a yes. <laughs> it was kind of broken. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Uh, thank you. Next, next items on our agenda are the possible uh, sales of the repositories. And we've already agen uh, amended our agenda uh, to do those as one vote. Uh, but Mr. Smith, may we have a reading of each of those uh, repositories uh, separately before I ask for a motion to vote on them together. Uh, yes, we've got um, the possible sale of parcel 07-026-078.0-008.00. It's uh, offered by the Erie Land Bank for a parcel at 244 Franklin Street, Quarry. Secondly, uh, Parcel number 29-016-064.0-003.89. It's a $250 <coughs> offer by Aaron Brinig for a parcel at 1810 DJ Avenue, Erie. Third is a parcel from the repository index 47-002-007.0. 009.03, a $250 offer by Elijah John Luther for a parcel along Route 97. Lastly, possible sale of a parcel, index number 33-117-470.0-025.00, a $250 offer by Mark Nademeyer for a parcel along West Gore Road. Thank you, we have a motion? So, so second. Uh, motion to include uh, all of those in one vote uh, made by Councilwoman Clear, seconded by Councilman Shank. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, Mr. Smith, may we have a roll call vote, please? On the sale of Parcels listed in our agenda. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Shank? Yes. Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. As we get to our last <laughs> item on the agenda today, um, which is uh, resolution number four, uh, and when I ask uh, Mr. Smith to uh, to read that in, in title and we make the motion, uh, I'd like to ask that we read this uh, and everybody uh, indulge me in reading this in its entirety. Uh, Mr. Smith, are, are you do you have a copy of it and are you okay in reading it or uh, would you rather have Nicole? read it what what is your uh, pleasure uh chairman i would appreciate if uh you would allow uh mrs in on ms in on to read that uh as she has it in its entirety and final form and i fear that i do not okay thank you that that's what i thought which is why i asked um but uh before we get to that uh Mr. Smith, could you read uh, in title only resolution number four? Uh, Mr. Chairman. 
Uh, yes, uh, Attorney Tallarico. Um, before you do that, you should probably amend the agenda to put it on. We, we did amend at the beginning to include that. That was part of Kim. Kim amended that to include this. Um, was it was it locked into some other motion at the same time? Or? Yeah, I, the motion to amend the all the agenda to move the things to a second. And she just said uh, resolution number four. She didn't she didn't read the uh, the heading of it. OK, not a problem. OK, thank you. Thank, thank you for that clarity. Mr. Smith in title only, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you mind if Mrs. Inon uh, takes care of that as well? Oh, yeah. No, that's that fine. Thank you. M Ms. Inon, could you uh, re read the uh, resolution, the title only, please? Resolution number four, 2021, promoting and preserving unity, mindfulness, hope, opportunity, equality, justice, and civility on the eve of the 20, uh, on the 45th presidential inauguration. Thank you. Do we have a motion? So, uh, motion by Councilwoman Showerman, seconded by Councilman Horton. And Nicole, could you uh, please read it in its entirety? Bear with me here. That's okay. Whereas Benjamin Franklin said, whilst the last members were signing the Constitution, looking towards the president's chair at the back of which a sun, a rising sun happened to be painted, observed to a few members near him, that painters had found it difficult to distinguish in their art a rising from a setting sun. I have said he often and often in the course of the session and the vestitudes of my hopes and fears as to its issue looked at the behind of the president without being able to tell whether it was rising or setting. But now at length, I have the happiness to know that it is a rising and not a setting sun. And whereas Mary McLeod uh, Bethune in 1939 said, the fight for a new America, fearless, free, united, morally rearmed, shoulder to shoulder with their fellow Americans will strive that this nation under God will have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people for the people and by the people shall not perish from the earth. This dream, this idea, this aspiration, this is what American democracy means to me. Whereas President George Washington in 1789 said, I behold the service pledges that as one, that as on one side, no local prejudices or attachments, no separate views nor party animosities will misdirect the comprehensive and equal eye which ought to watch over this great assemblage of communities and interests. So, on another that the foundations of our national policy will be laid in the pure and immutable principles of private mortality and the preeminence of a free government be exemplified by all the attributes which can win the affections of its citizens and command the respect of the world in humble supplication that since he has been pleased to favor the American people with opportunities for deliberating in perfect tranquility and dispositions for deciding which unparalleled unanimity on a form of government for the secure security of their union and the advancement of their happiness. So his divine blessing may be equally conspicuous in the enlarged views, the temperate consultations and the wise measures on which the successes of this government must depend. We're, we're asking you to say a lot, but thank you, Nicole. Thank you. <laughs> and whereas President Thomas Jefferson in 1801 said, we are all Republicans, today's Democrats. We are all Federalists, today's Republicans. If there may be any 
among us who would wish to dissolve this union or to change its Republican form, let them stand undisturbed and as monuments of the safety with which error of opinion may be tolerated, where, reasons, where reason is left free to combat it. And whereas President Abraham Lincoln in 1865 said, with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may have achieved and cherish a, ju a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations." And whereas President Theodore Roosevelt in 1905 said, we must show not only our words, but in our deeds that we are earnestly desirous of securing their goodwill by acting toward them in a spirit of just and generous recognition of all their rights. But just justice and generosity in a nation as in an individual, count most when shown not by the weak, but by the strong. And whereas President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1933 said, first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. And whereas President Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1953 said, how far have we come in man's long pilgrimage from darkness toward light? Are we nearing the light? A day of freedom and of peace for all mankind? Or are the shadows of another night closing in upon us? Great as are the preoccupations absorbing us at home, concerned as we are with the matters that deeply affect our livelihood today and our vision of the future. Each of these domestic problems is dwarfed by and often even created by this question that involves all of mankind. And whereas President John F. Kennedy in 1961 said, and so my fellow Americans, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. And whereas President Ronald Reagan in 1981 said, in this, pre in this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. From time to time, we've been tempted to believe that society has become too complex to be managed by self-rule, that government by an elite, that government by an elite group is superior to government for, by, and of the people. Well, if no one among us is capable of governing himself, then whom among us has the capacity to govern someone else? All of us together, in and out of government, must bear the burden. The solutions we seek must be equitable with no one group singled out to pay a higher price. And whereas government, President Barack Obama in 2009 said, on this day, we gather because we have chosen hope over fear, unity of purpose over conflict and discord. On this day, we come to proclaim an end to the petty grievances and false promises the rec recriminations and worn out dogmas that for, for far too long have strangled our politics. We remain a young nation, but in words of scripture, the time has come to set aside childish things. The time has come to reaffirm our enduring spirit, to choose our better history, to carry forward that precious gift that that noble idea passed on from generation to generation the God-given promise that all are equal, all are free, and all deserve a chance to pursue their full measure of happiness.
And whereas Eleanor Roosevelt said, this nation has placed its destiny in the hands and heads and hearts of its millions of free men and women and its faith in freedom under the guidance of God. Freedom means the supremacy of human rights everywhere. Our support goes to those who struggle to gain those rights or keep them. Our strength is our unity of purpose. To that high concept, there can be no end save victory. And whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, the true measure of a man is not how he behaves in moments of comfort and convenience, but how he stands at times of controversy and challenges. The time is always right to do the right thing. I always, <clears throat> I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that my four, ch my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And now, therefore, we the members of Erie County Council, on the eve of the inauguration of this nation's 45th President of the United States of America, join together in unity as proud and patriotic Americans, aware of our nation's past differences, and mindful of our nation's multicultural and multidimensional dimensionalism direct our positive energy in hope, opportunity, fairness, equality, justice, and civility. Thank you, Ms. Ennett, very much for reading that. And I, I just want to make a correction that um, it should. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you, Ms. Ennett, very much for reading that for us. I know that was a lot, and I appreciate everybody's indulgence. Uh, and it it should read, and I apologize uh, for the typo, the 46th president uh, for tomorrow. Um, so we, we will amend that uh, for the uh, the record. Um, but with that being said, are there any other uh, council members who wish to make any comments or have any questions? Uh, Councilwoman Clear, you're on mute. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to um, thank you for putting together that uh, collection of quotes um, that we've collected over the last few hundred years um, of uh, what, uh, what, what this means in our nation, this unity and, and, uh, and just what this nation means to all of us. And I think everyone is on council because we love this nation and we love, um, we love being able to um, serve and uh, we're here, we're all here, at least I know these people that I get to sit next to, all six of you, we're all here for the right reasons. Uh, Nicole and Doug too, but um, <laughs> we all do this because uh, we love this nation. And we wanna make it the best place it can be. It may not be perfect. And uh, I don't think it was ever meant to be, or I don't think that was the, that was, that was what was supposed to be, but we're evolving. Work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fixer upper. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, as Ben Franklin, uh, to quote him again, said uh, uh, that democracy is the worst uh, government on earth, um, except for any other form of a government that exists. <laughs> so uh, we, we are fortunate in America uh, to have the opportunity to uh, disagree uh, and to agree. Uh, but I, I suggest, and the purpose of this resolution is to say that no matter what our differences, no matter how deep the divide, uh, what brings us together uh, as a, a country and as a people uh, and as humankind are the things that unite us, uh, love and respect and uh, the existence and, uh, of each other and the hopes and opportunities for better tomorrows for us and our children uh, in a better country. Uh, and so uh, with that being said, uh, Mr. Smith, could we have a roll call vote, please? On resolution number four, Mr. Schenck? Yes. 
Mrs. Clear? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mrs. Rennie? Yes. Mrs. Showerman? Yes. Chairman Anderson? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that being said, uh, if there is no other business to come before the council, I'll ask for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Okay. Thank you. Our next uh, meeting will be um, on February 2nd, and the finance personnel will be January 28th. Um, I thank everybody for their uh, attendance and the work that's been done for today's meeting, and the meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening. Good night, everybody. Bye.